Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, today's offering from Japan House London, Making Nuno at Japan House London, which is an online panel discussion, which is in association with our upcoming exhibition at Japan House London. For all of you who are watching today, please uh, note that your microphone and webcam will be disabled for the entire duration of the event please use the question and answer feature to type your questions for the speakers at any time throughout the session. If you do not want your name to be attached to your question, please check the option send anonymously. And questions will be collated by Japan House moderators and a selection will be answered live at the end of the event. Please note that we may not be able to answer all questions during the session. Please note that the contents of this event will be streamed live on Facebook, YouTube and LinkedIn, where a recording will be archived later. So thank you very much for joining. My name is uh, Simon Wright and I am the Director of Programming at Japan House London, from where we are broadcasting this event today. But we are also broadcasting from Hong Kong and also from Tokyo. So three locations uh, around the world today. This event is in, in, in conjunction with the upcoming exhibition at Japan House London, um, as I mentioned, it's called Making Nuno, Japanese Textile Innovation from Sudoreko. And it opens at Japan House, uh, according to the current COVID-19 restrictions on the 17th of May. Uh, we were going to open uh, earlier, of course, but of course the situation in London has has meant that we have been unable to to open until until uh, next month. So to talk about this exhibition and how it was created, um, I'd like to introduce uh, today's three presenters. They are all important uh, in their respective fields and have created together a very special exhibition, which we're very proud to have in London. Please do uh, do, do do come on when 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 we uh, when I mention. I'll give you a short introduction. Uh, Sudo Reiko uh, is uh, one of Japan's most influential contemporary textile designers and is the design director of the Nuno Corporation, where she combines the Japanese traditions of dyeing and weaving with cutting edge technology to create a wide range of innovative textiles. Since uh, 2008, she has worked in fabric planning and development for Mijirushi Ryohin, Muji, and the Tsuroka Textile Industry Cooperative, and she joined Muji's advisory board in 2016. She is also a member of the pre prestigious Japan Design Committee. Thank you, Sudo-san. We also have Sudo-san, maybe, uh, Yes, Sudosa, hello. Thank you so much hello. for joining us from Tokyo. Thank you so <laughs> much. Hello, this is Kochiwa. So, this is Ohayo. Ohayo, Kazaimasu. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. We also have with us today uh, Takahashi Mizuki, who is joining us from Hong Kong. She is the executive director and chief curator of the Center of Heritage, Arts and Textile, abbreviated to CHAT, in Hong Kong. After serving as a founding curatorial member of the Mori Art Museum in Tokyo from 1999 to 2003, Takahashi-san has worked as senior curator at the Contemporary Art Center, Art Tower Mito, and realized numerous transdisciplinary exhibitions addressing various artistic forms, including manga, film, fashion, architecture, performance, and contemporary art. Thank you very much, Takahashi-san, for joining us from Hong Kong. Thank you so much. Thank you, Simon, and uh, thank you very much for the, all the fair colleagues of the Japan House London uh, for having me today. 
Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. We're delighted to have uh, to have you, the curator of the original exhibition, and uh, of course Sudo-san joining us from Tokyo. And we also have joining from Tokyo uh, Saito Seichi, who um, is uh, Panoramatics director, formerly Rhizomatics Architecture. He was born in Kanagawa in 1975 and began his career in New York in 2000 after graduating from Columbia University, returning to Japan upon being selected for the Echigo Sumari Art Triennial in 2003. He has won numerous international awards and has been vice chairman of the Good Design Award uh, from 2018 to 2020. He is creative advisor of the 2020 Dubai Expo Japan Pavilion and an expert for the People's Living Lab Promotion Council for Expo 2025, which will be held in Osaka in Kansai, Japan uh, in a few years time. Thank you very much, Saito-san, for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. thank you for having me. Oh, no, we are so privileged to have uh, three extremely powerful people in their fields uh, today. So thank you so much. Um, today's event will be conducted in English. Um, however, we do have uh, Beth and Jones uh, on hand to support uh, our speakers, should uh, any of our speakers wish to speak in Japanese, and, and Beth and will be able to interpret as uh, in from Japanese to English or, or vice versa if necessary. So thank you so much. Okay, I'd like to begin the event, if I may, with uh, Sudo Reiko. Um, and I know that you've got some, some slides to show us. And I'd like you to tell us a little bit about Nuno, if you would, Nuno Corporation, and what is the inspiration behind the exhibition that we have coming up in, in London uh, next month? Samson, thank you very much. And um, I, so this is the first slide shows um, our um, first Nuno shop, uh, was founded in 1984. A very, very small shop, but um, we started um, the studio for designing and making textile domestically within Japan. At present, we are nine people working together. We all share in the planning, designing, production, sales, shipping, and accountant work. There are several large um, divisions of labor, like including retail sales at our main Tokyo shop, um, like this, and three department stores, textile design commissions for hotels and shops. And as uh, Simon Sam mentioned about a little bit um, Muji, like um, I've been advising um, uh, like design advice for Muji and uh, the German umbrella uh, manufacturer Knirips and others. We are also um, activity promoting the work of various weaving and dyeing centers throughout Japan, for example. This one we did at the um, design gallery, which um, Japan Design Committee um, always run the show. Um, for example, displaying works from the Kyotango region with its 1,300 history of textile production set to be the uh, roots of Japanese silk weaving. And also this, uh, uh, meals we wrote for special textile at the Japan House London. And for this exhibition, um, the idea was to show off our design process in a striking way. Actually, it all started in April 2018. Uh, when the director of the Hong Kong Center for Heritage, Art and Textile Chats, Mizuki Sam approached me during our Koinobori Now show, which is a very, very big uh, show, it uses 2,000 square meter at the National Arts Center Tokyo. 
She said she'd like to see the digital art group Rhizomatics stage and Nuno exhibition. Some of the um, technique on display at the uh, Japan house are patented. So we needed to obtain a cooperation from uh, collaborating techniques, bringing a whole weaving and dyeing operation to the gallery was a major effort. But 38 farms in 10 different textile production area kindly lent their support to this board undertaking. We borrowed all kinds of their actual materials and um, tools. Far from Nuno's reputation for advanced technology, I think this shows at Japan House, we are truly low tech. Thank you. Thank you very mm -hmm. much, Sudo-san. I see we yes. have, we have um, the, the beginning of the exhibition that we have in, 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 in Japan House shown through these, these koinobori that uh, were first shown in, in, in Tokyo and which were also shown in Hong Kong as, as we're looking at here. You also showed just before then a little bit about tango and yes. the, the chiri men as well. And just so that uh, anybody who's watching and is able to visit us in London, we also have a, a sneak preview of some of the work that you have been doing with the silk, silk weavers of the Tango region in, in, in Kyoto prefecture. Um, so that's also something a little extra to be able to look forward to. Thank you very much, Sudo-san. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction to, to the exhibition. I, I would now like to ask uh, Takahashi-san uh, if you would like to uh, please share with us some of the ideas and inspiration that you had when creating the exhibition that you did in Hong Kong. I know Sudo-san has mentioned a little bit about uh, what you said at that time and also maybe a little bit about uh, the organization that uh, you are director for in, in Hong Kong itself. Okay, Simon. So let me share my screen first. Um, can you see my slide? Yes, we can. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, before talking about the Reiko shows, um, I want to uh, briefly introduce uh, what uh, chats in the textile arts and textile is because we are still very, very young institutions which uh, opened in March 2019. So um, perhaps most of the people understand the Hong Kong as a financial hub today, but actually the textile industry was driving force between the 1950s and the early 1990s. And the chat is uh, housed in the renovated cotton spinning mills as a part of um, the conservation preservation projects of the Hong Kong's textile industrial legacy. So, and uh, this is uh, our building before renovation and uh, inside the building the uh, cotton spinning was taken place and embracing the many workers, uh, also the, the, the uh, industrialists from the, the mainland China around that time. So therefore the, uh, um, the textile is um, uh, DNA of the chat. So the, um, in our permanent gallery, we show the, uh, what uh, Hong Kong textile was, but also that we want to bridge the um, uh, Hong Kong's textile industrial legacy and um, contemporary art design practice, and to and um, inviting the artists and designer to explore um, the you know the textile from uh, transnational and cross disciplinary perspectives. So the, as a Japanese curator, it was quite natural to um, you know to to uh, to. to to approach the Reiko Sudo, also because she was the, one of the prominent textile designers in the world. 
And uh, then I went to see her show in National Art Center, then was really impressed with the beautiful um, exhibition design realized by the collaboration with the uh, Saito-san, Sudo-san, and uh, Adrian. So now I was, I, I could see the, uh, if I could install the coin body in our space, how it looked like. So therefore, so, um, I, yeah, obviously, as the, you can see in the slide, um, I brought the coin body installations uh, to the uh, the big, uh, the hole inside um, the chat. But also, uh, in that coin body exhibitions, I found that the three very, very interesting the video, which was uh, made by the Saito-san's team, and uh, I learned it from Leiko-san, the Saito-san team has been involved in filming and documenting all the um, production process in the, the factory across the Japan. So, and uh, that's, you know, the videos and them uh, shown in a very tiny monitors, but very, very powerful. And actually it showed you what kind of technique and the peoples, even the landscape and the seasonary, you know, features are involved in the, the production process, which usually we cannot see from the textile itself. So therefore, so now I asked to Reiko-san, I really want to show how your beautiful textiles are made in collaboration with the people. Because that is also the beauty of the Lakos and textiles. It's actually, you know, uh, not employing a Japanese uh, traditional technique, but also involved in the advanced materials and the technology. So that was really, really um, make them uh, her textiles very unique. So therefore, we started to show the um, uh, all the materials. You know, also the touch panel, so people can see the, um, you know, the making process, how Reiko-san developed the textile from the inspiration to the actual, you know, the textile. And see also the show the, um, the old kimono fabrics, which see, um, took the color. And, uh, the, the, uh, Saito-san team, the, made a very, very, interesting installation actually in in abstraction form to showing the how each um the signature textiles are made so actually you can see the how the each textile was woven or what kind of techniques are applied to make the uh, unique textiles with the um the video showing the uh, the people actually working on the textile so, and uh, also this is a kibiso, so you can see in Japan house. Yeah, as you can see there, uh, the, you can see the people, uh, the, the uh, artisans actually printed, uh, printing on the special glue on the fabric. So, yeah, so that was a kind of uh, the way we showed, uh, we made it in the Lego show in chat because we also want to show the uh, how, what kind of labors are involved in the textile productions because they are normally underrated and overshadowed by the uh, finished products. So I hope the, uh, um, the people in uh, audience in, in London also can enjoy you know, what kind of technique and the people that all, you know, collaborate with the Lego. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mizuki. Thank you so much. Um, it's exactly what you have highlighted here, which the process and the collaboration with the makers of the textiles, which was so attractive uh, to, to us at Japan House um, and, and has enabled us really for it to fit in with what we do i think it was extraordinary what was created and i can see that you finished here with uh one of the installations which was uh as you mentioned created by saito seiji um as the the art director for for the exhibition um maybe i can i can bring in saito-san at, at this time thank you very much 
uh, for thank joining you. us from Tokyo. And, and thank you, Mizuki, for, for, for joining us um, from, from Hong Kong to give us this uh, the, your presentation too. Maybe Saito-san, you, you, you have um, you've worked a little bit with, with Sudo-san before, I've, I've, I've heard, um, as, as, as Sudo-san mentioned in her, in her first presentation there. But you could tell us a little bit about the artistic direction that you undertook for, for this exhibition and how you decided to present uh, Sudo-san's textile. Okay, thank you. Um, so the quickly, uh, let me introduce myself and also like my uh, team, Rhizomatics. Well, right now it becomes the Pan Um Well, we're, well, we have uh, several different phases. Like uh, people know us about media artists, um, some are like interactive designers or well, we are architects too. Um, so, but the, I think the, uh, uh, a lot of people know us about like, you know, DD was a high tech or you know, kind of emerging technology um, embedded into like entertainment or uh, the media art, uh, which is in including like the, the closing ceremony or the Olympic, for example, uh, the prime minister becomes like the Mario Brothers, that kind of thing. Um, and we use like projections or interactions or, you know, the sensors and all that. But um, the, the origin of Actually, um, the the relationship with Sudo San was I know Sudo San more than Sudo San know me because I study architecture and then Sudo San uh, was collaborating with a lot of architects, so I know her. But the I was actually searching my uh, uh, mail account and then I found like uh, it was actually 2014, which is like seven years ago. The first contact, uh, physical contact with the Sudo San. Uh, there is actually the common friends in between. And then, so um, our first kind of job uh, slash collaboration is renewing the uh, New Zealand website, which is like seven years ago. And then, so I started working with the Sudo-san and I, I went to her studio and seeing all the, um, all the tech side and I was amazed. And then also, um, I was I I knew I briefly knew about like how the um, the textile process is actually um, kind of happening uh, somewhere in Japan. So I asked Sudo-san like, let me let me shoot the film documenting the process of Japanese textile. So that's actually um, um, take me to the why I becomes like artistic director for this uh, chat exhibition uh, for the pseudo science exhibition. And then also like how I come up with like, you know, the, um, how I present the pseudo science textile. Let me um, share the screen. So, oh, well, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna um, create some uh, sound. I think it might be loud, but it's like uh, really important. So you hear the sound. There's so many sounds and so many process that how the textile is emerged, especially the pseudo So Like for example, this is a paper um, gluing on the top of the textile. And some are loud, some are like and some are uh, some are like the process nobody know, nobody can imagine. And then, so what I thought was actually, sorry, it was too loud for me too. Um, but the, the boundness is really important because that's how I felt the first time um, I, the Sudo-san took me to the Yamagata, which is in Northern Japan to shoot the film. And then I was just amazed like how noisy and how density and how dynamics that um, the technology is. And then Sue was mentioned in the best, her best word say low tech, but it's not really low tech. It's like really high tech because the machine itself is like the back in 90, early nineties and uh, some are made by Nissan or someone made by Toyota, which is like the car fabrication company right now. But it's, you know, it's original uh, for the tech side. And the one motor um, make more than thousand parts to actually 
move um, to make that one big woven uh, machine. And then I was amazed. So that's why, for example, like, you know, I did want to uh, share that dynamics. And then I did want to share the process of like the textile, which uh, we were presenting in chat and what we're going to uh, present in the Japan house. For example, like, you know, using this a area as a projection to show, like my idea is like freeze the eye, the moment uh, in the factory and then bringing into the chat. So it's like the same dynamics, but this uh, totally different, um, the perspective, I mean, in terms of like seeing the process in the museum or in the factory. But the, well, I try to make it like the same intensity at the same time. So that's why I use a projection or I use a sound system um, to actually play um, how the environment when this tech, uh, textiles emerged. And then, so this is a projection, but it's not really the high tech. It's like it just using the technology as um, as a, like as a tool to present the process. So um, when I when I design, I mean, uh, not needed the artistic direction, but there's like the collaboration with the pseudo san to present at the chat the first time was like. Well, the first of all, like how I want to, I I want to share the moment of like emerging a textile, which is like, well, maybe I can use the media because well, that's our expertise. So media means like a sound and then uh, the films or projections and so forth. And then my original idea, which I I think we successfully did, is like how I can make the interpretation of the moment in the factory to the the gallery. And then also kehai of the process. Kehai is like um, to uh, translate in, the, in in English is like indication or you know it's like in prime, but it's not like intangible, you know the kind of uh, moment. But you see the people actually the hands is like jumping on to a the textile and it start growing or start you know printing. That kind of kehai I want to actually show. Well, because the textile, what the, I think the usual textile exhibition itself is like, usually like showing a textile, how beautiful it is. It's beautiful, but especially the pseudo sound process is like so complicated. But the, all the um, the team um, making in, uh, the textile for pseudo signs, they're respecting pseudo signs. Um, and then also like they, learning and then they try to digest and then they try to improve their skills. So that's uh, actually the, the uh, concept behind it. That's it. Thank you very much. You've given us a wonderful insight there on how the ex it, it's brought it to life to me as well. Um, I, I remember I, I was very, I was lucky enough to see it in Hong Kong and, and, and Mizuki has a has a has a wonderful space in Hong Kong, and, and as you mentioned, it's an it's a it's a it's a former factory. And this this intensity that you talk about really does come out when you see the installations themselves. We are unfortunately not as big as as Chat in Hong Kong, so uh, we haven't been able to 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 bring everything that was in that exhibition. Uh, from Hong Kong, but we have been able to bring the core of what you've created, I hope, and I hope we do we do it justice in Japan House London. Thank you very much, Saito-san, for the glimpse of what is to come. Your last slide in particular was, I think, hopefully showing people what they will see. Thank you so much. Sure. We do, of course, have the films in Japan House London as well, which were, were shown in Hong Kong. Um, there are there are a couple of extra ones as well, which weren't shown. Yep. So there's new footage as well to be seen, isn't there, in, 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 in London. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed for your presentations, for that, uh, that the brief introduction we had. I'm sorry that we don't have so long to be able to... To devote to, to, to all of you, but let me open it up, if I may, to 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 everybody. So please feel free uh, to speak uh, w w when you like. And maybe I'll start with with, with Sudo-san, if 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 I may, Sudo-san. 
The exhibition, as I mentioned, opens in May. So the installations that we've seen that Saito-san has created uh, from Mizuki's curated exhibition. But however, next week on the 12th of April, we are able to open our shop area in Japan House. And some of the work that goes to the exhibition has been shown on, on, on the ground floor as well. And we have a display of old fabrics from, from, your, from your own collection, from pieces of kimono, uh, which have been collected since the 1980s. And I think we have a, a, sneak, a sneak picture, which we, we, we took of, of what is uh, being shown in Japan House. Yeah. Could you tell us, Sudo-san, a little bit more about, about this collection? Oh, yeah. Well, ever since my um, early 20s, I've collected old fabric swatches at uh, free markets and uh, antique shops. And occasionally from uh, old fabric, uh, especially um, shops in Kyoto. I'm particularly interested in silk crepe fabric that are uh, difficult to dye with the vegetable dye stuff, but it's so beautiful, so bright, amazing. So I used these as color samples and references. Soon I asked um, these old fabric shops to save small pot. Only I, I can allow to buy small things so and the scraps for me and they they do and my uh, collection really grew these um crepe fabrics are my sources for nuno basic colors thank you very much <laughs> we 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 have we've had a little bit of explanation with them but i think Every time people see the this this collection put together, I don't know you spent a lot of time creating. So some are like a, yeah, here in the middle, basho clothes from Okinawa. Bosha, basho, and, yes. Yes, and uh, some of the pieces from India. Ah, the like Sarasa. Sarasa, yes. Mm -hmm. And some indigo dyeing as well. Yes. And I think every time somebody looks at this piece, you will find something different in it. Unfortunately, we're not as we're not able to have as big uh, a display as as was in Hong Kong. You had a a, a lot of space there, I know, uh, and that's one bit that is slightly different. But we are able to bring it to to London as well. Uh, so please, when when Japan House opens, you'll be able to to see this from the very beginning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Takahashi-san. Um, if I if I can can maybe ask you, Saito-san mentioned the films of the manufacturing, and we we will talk a little bit about this, I think, later. The different regions around Japan that, that Sudo-san uses so many manufacturing processes. Some of them are very complicated. Some of them are very high tech, as Saito-san mentions, actually, and we try to show that in the exhibition. I know that you visited some of these of these factories maybe you could tell us a little bit more about those visits and, and how you felt and, and how important you thought that was yes and i was um the privilege to visit some of the factories um in yamanashi and uh, kusatsu uh in the kind of the center part of japan so uh, what i was surprised um was it's all the factories which I visited, a family lung. So it's a small, very small scale. And the factory itself very small. And um, actually the machines are squeezed in into the small space. So you will supply this actually help, you know, people carry the old materials and then finish the fabrics. But, and, uh, but the people working there, they are very, I have to say that it's calm, quiet, and um, but I, I could feel that they have very strong, you know, pride, you know, of the, their techniques which they invented. So then, the uh, every time 
you know, the Leiko sounds that suggested something new, which uh, likely beyond the, the past experiences, but they are trying to answer the Leiko sounds request. And um, I think it's a, that was really, really beauty. Before, you know, um, the, before they are not uh, operated by the um, big capitals. So I think so they can kind of manage, you know, the, uh, what they want to do or what they have to do. And that, that's some things beyond their, you know, the business. You know, that was really, I, I was really impressed. But on the other hand, I was very um, worried about uh, how they can, you know, to sustain their business. You know, because they are also uh, losing the inheritance you know, to take over their technique and the factory itself. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. So you mentioned there about sustainability, how they can sustain the business. And part of the exhibition in London that we've tried to highlight, the, that you did create in Hong Kong, but to highlight the sustainability of, 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 of three areas. But one of them, of course, is in this regional manufacturing. And uh, another one is the maintenance and the sustainability of skills which are specific to these particular factories. I, I maybe just go back to Sudosan if I could ask you. Sorry, do, do you do you talk to these factories very often? How do you how do you get people to 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 follow your 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 direction or these new, brand new ideas that you bring to them, as as Mizuki mentioned? うーん。なかなか難しいですけど、本当にケースバイケースで。あの、it's <laughs> really really case by case and um uh, when I visited first time, of, of course it's really difficult to communicate. But um I've been working with them more than like 20 or 30 years now and really easy just to, um really easy to communicate with them and they know me and they know Nuno and um, also it's really important for us they kind of like protected us really nice way and um, so without their um, support it's kind of like support because as our small business is so difficult <laughs> to run. I can imagine. And, and also <laughs> Japanese textile industrial system are all like cooperate together. So each of them uh, trust each other kinda? very, very deeply. So, and it's always like one fabric will be traveling to another area and then sent to the different dyer and then sent to some cutter or finisher or so it's just moving around. This so, this I noticed, yes, in, in, in the yeah. exhibition in Hong Kong where 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 Takashi san you had created these these material boxes with with, with Sudo san which show the process and you could see that they came from different places. And so in, in London, we've also tried to bring out that aspect of the way that one fabric is created and, and travels around Japan in a way to, 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 to it to be made. Right. <laughs> その工房同士が本当にこう信頼関係ができているので出来上がるまでにいろんな工場をこう歩き回るんですけど一つのテキスタイルがでもあのみんなそれを受け入れてで責任持ってそのプロの仕事をしてまた次のでその工場はまたそ
each factory and each workshop, they really do have this deep trust between them. Because as I say, one textile will go around from factory to factory to workshop, and each one will take that in, will take responsibility for that that textile will carry out their their professional um, processes on that textile and then and then send it off to the next factory and it's it's a chain that that only works because you have this trust um, at the foundation um, between the factories between the the artisans between the craftspeople um, and as well uh, the the pride that Takahashi San mentioned. Thank you very much. Thank you. This, this, this idea of, of small manufacturing and the, 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 the machines packed closely together in, in small, in, in, in small uh, areas uh, all, all over the country. Uh, Saito-san, if I, I, I'd like to come to you maybe, when, when you were making your, your films and then mm -hmm. as a result making the installations, how did you choose uh, what to show in the installations, and 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 did you were there conversations with 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 the with the manufacturers and the craftspeople and and, and with Sudo San what what best to, to to bring out because in the installations that we have in the are, are very different techniques are shown and mm. so I was uh, well, the textile. Uh, which exhibited in the, uh, the chat was actually um, what the Sudos and the Nai and also the Mizuki sound we took in, like which one we should actually choose, like uh, the garden and then also like kind of understanding like, you know, the in terms of the process, like which is a really interesting and also like, you know, directory, a and also dynamically uh, presented in the museum. Um, so that's a process, but, um, so eventually the film we shoot, like for example, at the, uh, um, at the for example, like the Shiga uh, prefecture, which is like uh, adjacent to the Kyoto, um, the, like, you know, the silk print A uh, fabricator. Uh, but we have to actually, go again to shoot the, the same angle as like we projected it on the, uh, on the fabric. So we went again and then, so we shoot. Um, so, but the, every time we go um, and to actually talk to the, the, the fabricator and then the teams like the pseudo summation, like the support, um, they're so proud of like what they're doing. And then also, I think the, the pseudo science process, like every time will we go in the summer to actually shoot the new film, is that they know exactly which part they're taking care of. Mm -hmm. And which means like, you know, um, they know how this fabric or dyeing or, you know, the process or even like a drawing is actually end up as like as a textile. So that's the, the amazing part that like I learned from pseudo sound all the time. So that like, I think it's somebody in the chat actually uh, um, asked me the, uh, the question about the uh, Kehai, uh, which I presented in the slide, is that like the fabric or textile, uh, including like my shirts or like every, everywhere, we don't need really to imagine there's like a lot of people, a lot of machines behind it, but you know, we have to understand like there is so many hands behind it, especially the, um, the fabric or textile, which pseudo sound being actually working with. So that's a kehai. Well, but the, you know, when you see you choose a jean or you see the shirts in this uh, supermarket or department store, people don't need to imagine like um, the things like behind it. So that's what I want to, actually tell in the exhibition like using the media. Thank you. So this 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 behind the scenes idea of of what is the final production piece um, is, is is I think eloquently shown through the various material boxes and the the installations that you created with the projections with with examples of of, of Sudosan's uh, 
work finished products. I wanted to ask Takahashi san maybe how did how did your audiences in Hong Kong uh, f- find this this exhibition? There's so much in it, and there was so much more in Hong Kong than in London uh, because we can't fit it all in. How did they find this exhibition? Actually, well, that is the year when, you know, I'm sorry for the London show because of COVID-19, so we cannot invite the people to touch on the fabrics, right? But uh, we are lucky to show the 100 different textiles, you know, textile to people to touch it, on it. So there, I was really surprised here, you know, the people actually say they, they touch almost, you know, all 100 fabric one after another. So they are, um, because then we show the material box in front of the uh, touch panels. So that's also trigger their interest how these raw materials is processed into the fabric. That obviously, you know, um, the texture, they cannot imagine from the materials to begin with. So that was, yeah, the, I think so that is um, uh, interesting things in, this, in, 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 in textile exhibitions. But uh, the, I also received many positive comments on the way of uh, the displaying using the immersive sounds and the, also the video. Because, um, you know, well, normally, you know, textile exhibition people are easily associated with the um, the hanged beautiful fabrics, right? But then um, the our challenge is how to break through that conventional way of you know the textile display. So that we want to um kind of the try to to show the uh, textile exhibition not to 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 static. That, uh, that very active. Absolutely, thank you very much. And, uh, and, and that, that, that active idea, I think, even in static objects, especially in the material boxes, mm. was something that appealed very much to me in particular, which you showed in Hong Kong to, to, to great effect, mm. I think, as well. We've already got lots of questions coming in, so maybe I should move to the questions that we have from our our viewers. And this is um, to everybody, to to Sudo-san, Takashi-san, and to Saito-san. This is a question from Euphemia Franklin. Um, It's a question for all speakers. Uh, How does the curation process and display for textiles differ between textiles for the body and textiles for interiors and space. I am curious to know how you all think about the viewing process of textiles and its many applications. Mm. Would you like to take that one first, Mizuki, as a as I think, a, yeah, yeah. As I think it's yeah. Yeah, that is a really yeah. I think it's, that is a, such a wonderful, wonderful question because I have been thinking thinking about that point since I started working for the chat because my background background is contemporary art, right? So the um the so mainly the contemporary artists are making the artworks to exhibit in a white cube or black box or whatever. So but the textile uh have the kind of you know uh two aspect you know, textile as um, the finished design, but also the textile as a material to be processed into the other, like interior furnishings or dress and whatever. I, 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 I don't have the, um, the single answer. Uh, I'm, I'm still, you know, um, making the different trials, but makes the textile exhibitions um, exciting. You know, also to make the uh, audience to think about what textiles are and how, you know, textile are, um, you know, uh, are used in our everyday life, but also the, for the special occasions, what the textile means. Thank you, thank you very much indeed. 
would anyone else like to, to, to comment on this? I know we have lots of questions to go through. Uh, uh, please. Uh, well, uh, one, one comment about the curation. I think the Mizuki-san, um, Lego-san has like, I think including me has um, the kind of perspective in common uh, from the beginning. Like what well, we want to show the process. We want to actually show the, you know, not leaving it interactive, but the, you know, the, like moving, using a moving image and also like the sound to show the, uh, the process. So, well, I remember uh, when I met the Mizuki-san in, in uh, Tokyo uh, while we were having uh, uh, the, the Koi uh, exhibitions. I think we talk about like, I did want to uh, bring the fabric, I mean, the, the factory in Japan to the, um, the Hong Kong. Of course, it's impossible, but like, you know, that's a metaphorical thing. So that's like the beginning of the, the curation from a different point of view, like me curating the space and um, Mizuki-san curating the, the, uh, the context and then Leiko-san curating the fabric itself, I mean, the, the textile itself. So, and then also like the, the one thing um, is, I think the answer in this question is, I really want to show the magic of Leiko san being actually utilizing. There's so many magics. Like for example, um, there's actually um, the the salt, uh, the fabric, but the, you dip in the water, it's disappearing. Mm. But so that's what I really want to show uh, using a moving image, which is like the eventual the projection mapping to the audience. So that's that's the, the one ultimate goal for me. Yeah. Mm. I want to add the uh, Saito san so that perhaps is a um, yeah the, our working you know the uh, the our way of collaborations between Leiko san Saito san and myself is a bit similar with the the way the Leiko san you know making the textile you know the inviting the uh, the professional from the different field you know uh, the engineers you know the also the uh, uh, biochemistry peoples and um, uh, yeah I said you know the diverse professionals are involved in making the single textile so I think it's a we are kind of mimic the uh, uh, that's, that's working in a collaboration style in making the exhibition thank you very much Yes, it's true, Sudosan. I mean, I, I look at every explanation that you give me about every fabric, and there's so much, <laughs> so much interesting technique about the materials, about who made it, where it's made, and, and where all the materials have come from. That it, it is extraordinarily complex, and um, as Saito-san says, uh, magic. I would say. <laughs> I think you're right there. Thank you very much. We have lots of questions. So maybe I'll move on to this next one. Uh, this is from Mariona and she says, thank you all for the great presentations. This is a question I think for Sudo-san specifically. Uh, Sudo-san, um, about the old kimono and the chirimen uh, in particular, you said it, it inspires your, your, your designs. Uh, what is it? Is it the weave? Is it the pattern? Is it the color? Is it the cut? Or something else? What, what is it that gives you inspiration? Um, Chirimen fabric uh, made out of very, very highly twisted yarn. So highly twisted yarn will give the texture, a uh, textile, a texture, as well as the depth of the um, color, because um, the twisted yarn will give uh, a layering color or layering um, shadow. Right? Mm -hmm. So that um, color will give uh, depth as well as uh, like a little bit of a stretches. Only one single thread will give a many different layer of the of textile. So that's why I really love the chili man textile. And I, we got many, many tightly twisted yarn, but Chirimen was the most highly twisted yarn in the world. Kana? Mm -hmm. Deino kata. Kana? 
Hi. Thank you very much. And we're very lucky in London to be able to have examples of, of Tango Chirimen as well uh, in, 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 in the shop. So you can see that from next week as you come in. Thank you so much. We have another um, question here. I think maybe for Saito-san, can I, can I ask you again? This um, is from Elizabeth. Um, she's very interested in the noise of textile production uh, being included in the exhibition. And she was brought up in the textile hub in northern France in the 1960s, where we're surrounded mm -hmm. by wool production, weaving and knitting. And her strongest memory as a young girl was the noise and smell of the factory before the beautiful product came out. It's beautiful words. Thank you. I wonder how much of this noise will be uh, or sound will be included in the London exhibition. Um, it, it's the same as it was in Hong Kong, but... Um, it's part of your uh, it, isn't it? Yeah, I think it, it isn't that same as like the uh, the one in Hong Kong. Uh, but for if you play the film uh, of the process, I think uh, I highly recommend you play. Maybe I ask Simon to play the sound as loud as the uh, the factory is. It's so loud. But the well, maybe like you know, the once in a while, maybe like you worry the people and then pray the same intensity as it's really loud. But the, the sound and the smell, smell, I really want to actually bring like one place to another, but it's so uh, difficult. But the sound is like so big element for the textile, which I didn't really realize until like I travel with pseudo sound to shoot, and then that becomes like you know the. Um, the people, I mean, the, the person question uh, talking about the the old memory, but it's the same, still same. Like the older neighbors, uh, which is you know the all the textile industries are um, still going on, has the sound in the neighbors, and that's actually the beauty of it. So uh, please watch the film with that same intensity as the sound as uh, the factories. That's how you learn it. Understood. We we shall. I know that. that thank you very much. I know that uh, Mizuki uh, puts the the films in a separate room in Hong Kong uh, in a night dark room. We, we will we will definitely put the films in a separate space and and, and turn the volume up for you. Thank you. So thank much. you. Thank you. Japanese? Please. うん、あの、音で言うとね、例えば単語に行った時なんですけど、単語のその糸、え、共鳴所を作るにはものすごい時間がかかるんですね。で、24時間工場動いてるんですよ。真っ暗の畑の中に音が音、その糸がガーンと
what are the challenges of 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 these these uh, small workshops with traditional mm -hmm. techniques and how can they be incorporated in new design? Who would like to uh, maybe maybe answer Takahashi san kana? Mm. Uh, yeah, I have been thinking since I visited the factories because um, when I visit the, uh, one of the factories in Aksatsu and actually they're printing factory and uh, they realize very innovative uh, the printing and um, the, the collaborate with the Sudo sans for many years to make the very unique textiles and even, you know, textiles for the uh, kind of top you know, commercial brands, fashion brands. And about when I visit there, only three people working in huge factory. And um, so I asked the, um, the people there, well, what you are doing is very creative and innovative. So if the, well, don't you have the, any textile students you know, come to uh, asking, working for you? They said that, well, the um, uh, long working hours need to standing all the time. Is in the winters the, the factories um, are very cold. You know, it's a very uh, difficult uh, working conditions. So young generation cannot be tolerate in working under such a harsh environment. But I think it's about. I just simply you know, what they are doing should be known more. Yeah, so they, um, especially the young generations. Yeah, uh, that, that, that's what I think. Mm, that's probably part of our job at Japan House as well, to try and uh, to, to tell this. It's, it is something that, that did strike me, this, this, you know, the variety uh, and this small manufacturing around Japan yeah. is extraordinarily important to mention, I think, to everybody. Sudo-san, maybe, um, I know we're running out of time, but maybe a last word, maybe from, 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 from Sudo-san. What challenges do you think, what challenges are there for the future of, of these, these, uh, these workshops with using these techniques? Mm. あの、どんどん変わっていくと思うんですけどね、これから、その時代によっても。あの、でもね、あの、本当少なくはなってるんですけれど、例えば、え、私大学でテキスタイルを教えてるんですけど、あの、私たちの頃は工場で仕事をする
And you can see that at Japan House. Uh, it's it's a very much of a success story, I would say, of, of, of these techniques. I do apologize that we've run out of time. I'm so, so sorry. Um, thank you so much. Just, just to make everybody know that um, there are more events related to, to, to the Nuno exhibition coming up um in in the next few weeks uh, please do um attend uh you may you'll find the answers um to a lot of the questions that you've put through it as well in the exhibition so uh please please do if you are able to visit us we'll also be making an exhibition uh for everybody um online as well the the exhibition starts on on monday the 17th of may uh in the gallery at japan house though there are some parts of the exhibit which are in the shop uh, which will be available to be seen from the 12th of April. Please do come and see Making Nuno Japanese Textile Innovation from Sudo Beko. Thank you so much to our presenters today who have, have given up their time. I know it's, it's rather late in Japan and Hong Kong. Thank you so much. Thank you very much Saito-san. Um, I, I want to talk so much more about your creations as well, about Osaka 2025, about Dubai that you're working with, about the the what what you made for the for the the display at, uh, at Rio in the closing ceremony of the Olympics. There, uh, I want to talk so much more. Unfortunately, we haven't got time today. I hope oh. we can talk again another time. Thank you so much. Thank you to Takashi Mizuki. Thank you so much. For joining us from Hong Kong and for creating this wonderful exhibition as well, creating this opportunity with with Saito San and Sudo San, and for allowing it to happen in London as well, uh, we'll do our best to do it justice. We've put a little twist on it as well and brought out some of the things that you have shown us um, in in Hong Kong. Um, it's a it's a pity you won't be able to come and see it uh, yourself, but uh, we'll 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 try and do our best for you. So thank you very much indeed for joining. And of course, thank you very much to Sudo San. Thank you so much. Uh, no, thank you. Without your magic, as Saito San said, none of this would really happen. Um, Takahashi San and Sudo San have been on, on, online with us almost daily, putting this exhibition together. We're still in the process. So thank you so much for your hard work for, for, for making that happen. It, I know it's a challenge, but um, I think we've created an exhibition which uh, I hope everybody will like. Uh, the exhibition um, will start on the 17th of May. Just another couple of ex uh, uh, notices from Japan House, if I may. We have uh, uh, a talk with JAXA, presentation, uh, International Space Station and Space Exploration with astronaut Yui Kimia on the 21st of April, um, if you'd like space. Uh, please do uh, come and join us for that. That's uh, in conjunction with JAXA and also the uh, Royal Astronomical Society here in the UK. Thank you very much. That's the third in our series of JAXA uh, presentations. We also have a virtual exhibition tour, Architecture for Dogs. We will make a virtual exhibition for Nuno as well, so uh, people will be able to see that online. Thank you very much indeed, everybody, for joining us. I'm sorry we went a little bit over time. Uh, thank you very much for attending. Thank you very much for presenting and joining us. And we hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much. And uh, stay safe. Look after yourselves.